Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. I'm joined by Gary Curran. How are you? And we are going to do a team that we think could line out for Ireland in 2024. This is a strange video to do because it was your idea. We, yeah, it was my idea, but we could get absolutely everything wrong. Yeah. And the only way to know is to come back in 2024. But you can have your say, of course, on the video as well. We're picking um, some of the players that we think could step up over the next couple of years and 2024, hopefully. It's the Euros year? It is a Euros year, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, a Euros year that when we're making it to the Euros, these are the type of teams that are coming mm. in. It's Qatar 2022 is the World Cup, so it'll be two years after. Yeah. So I've seen Paul's team and... There's, there's a lot to it, like he's taking some risks. I think I'm going safer, but you can make up your mind and let us know in the comments uh, which team you prefer and if we've left anyone out as well. So I'm going to let you go first, Paul, and go through... Oh, what are you scribbling out there? No, it's just it's for something else. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to let you go through your goalkeeper and then your back three or back four or back two or whatever you're playing, and then I'll do the same, okay? Okay. Well, I'm, I'm going to go with Gavin Bazunu. Um, obviously a huge prospect. Went to Man City from Champion Rovers there last year and has gone on strength to strength. He's playing with the under twenty trees at the moment. Whether he continues with Man City, I'm not sure, but he looks brilliant and he looks like a keeper for the future. Maybe Quevin Keller is a little bit unlucky not to be in there, but what's we'll the other career progresses for the time being? But right now the way Bazoon is headed, yeah. he looks like he's number one. I think I think he'll be better than O'Hara and probably better than Mark Travers. Even though Mark Travers is playing Premier League football, but yeah. again. This is just a hypothetical. Yeah, thing, absolutely. So. You're allowed to. You're allowed to dream. Yeah. But then I'm gonna go with a back three, and I think you know most people who um, have been following the under 21s would agree with this. And they are, they're all playing regular championship football now. That's Dara O'Shea who just scored a goal there for, for West Brom, and he's been covering that right back and been brilliant there. Yeah. Ryan High at the top of the championship. You got Nathan Collins at Stoke, who was captain of them at 18 years of age, even when they were going through that bad patch. Um, he looks like a really, really good defender, and the likes of Manchester United and all were after him as well. Mm. Conor Masterson was obviously at Liverpool, was let go, and recently started getting back in the team for QPR, and is looking like he's, he's a good gonna, footballer. Yeah, he's looking like he's going to be a really good player, and he's always been really good with the under twenty ones anyway. Yeah. So that's my back three and your keeper. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, and uh, and 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 Gavin and goals, and then I'm going on to my. Hold on a second. Let, let us just compare mine, right? And we'll go. We'll take it slow because we don't want to. Oh, don't right. I thought you asked for my eleven. Sorry. I want the. I wanted the, the the defensive players first, and I'll compare to mine. Okay. okay. Because this could all be a bit much. <laughs> okay. So I've gone for Keevy and Kelleher and goal. Um, I'm a Liverpool fan. Watching him in the FA Cup and a couple of little um, appearances here and there, and I think he's been solid. He's been good. He's a lot to learn. He's very young, um, and I, I I would like to see him stepping up and making the making that number one spot in 2024. I've gone for a back three as well, just like yourself. I've gone for O'Shea as well as yourself, just signed that new contract for West Brom, scored a goal the other day, and his performances have been brilliant. So I'm going for him. Uh, Jimmy Dunn, uh, I think he's still a Burnley player, but he's been out on loan a couple of times. Is that anyway. Fleetwood now? On loan is that Fleetwood now? I, think. I, like, I like Jimmy Dunn. I think he's, he has that Irish about him. He's big, he can head the ball, he can, he can come out and play a little bit of football as well. So I like him. And I've gone for, I was going to go for Masterson as well, but I said, you know what? It'd be more like us to have John Egan still in there. Because he has a couple, he has a lot of football in him still as well. He's going to be a big personality, and I actually would probably tip him to be my Ireland captain in this team. So I'm going to say John Egan, the man's going to play until he's 47, and he's going to be playing for Ireland until he's 46. So that's my goalkeeper and my back three. Please continue. Okay, well, um, yeah, I mean, but what age is he going to be in 2024? Because he's, what, 28 now? Yeah, so he'll be 32. Like, that's... that's what, yeah. age, what age is Shane Duffy now? He must be 30. Yeah, well, Richard Kyo, I suppose, was there for a good, good time. But yeah. this is Stephen Kenny going to be managing at that time. You never know, you never know. Unless we recall Steve Staunton back from management to save uh, Stephen Kenny, like we did with yeah, yeah. saving uh, Martin O'Neill. But yeah, midfield. so moving on, have you gone for a. Four well, I got, my, I got my wing backs okay. uh, in there. So I'm going with Leo Connor, who is absolutely fantastic. He's a, he obviously went to Celtic from Manchester United. The deal uh, that he's, he signed um, was to originally to get first team football. Hasn't worked out for him. He's gone on loan to Partick Thistle at the moment. So hopefully the loan deal goes well for him. Yeah. And he will uh, he will go back to Celtic in the summer and hopefully get a pre-season on his belt and maybe start getting a run of games. Nate McCarthy's captain against uh, New Zealand. Got that assist uh, for Callum Robinson. I just think he's a brilliant player. He's captain the underage teams and stuff like that. Just a really, really good player. Uh, really good in the under-17 euros as well. Uh, under-19 euros, sorry, as well. Um, and then on the left, I was speaking about under-17 euros, Matt Everett, who's yeah. playing at Brighton. 
the young lad with the with the hair, um, the blonde hair. But uh, no, he looks like a really good player. Yes. You know, eye for a goal. And I think it won't be long before he starts getting capped by uh, under 21s and stuff like that. I think he's got great ability. And I, I, well, I hope he sticks with Ireland. Um, I can't imagine why he wouldn't. But he's on my left hand side. Okay. And not giving him too much responsibility because I have two midfielders in there who will bring you energy and legs with Jason Malumbi and Connor Coventry. Um, Malumbi signed a new contract with Brighton before yeah. the season started, went on loan to Millwall, obviously with the intention of playing them next season. That's what I think is, is going to happen there. And then Connor Coventry has just signed a new contract and he's gone along to Lincoln. He's link, linked up with Zach Elbazetti and, uh, and, um, and uh, what's his name? Anthony Scully as well has just gone there as well. So there's a good Irish connection yeah. there at Lincoln City. But that's um, the midfield. And then Jason Knight as my, my number 10 attacking midfielder arriving into the box. So that's my kind of midfield, I suppose, slash rest of my defense. I would be happy. Now, honestly, I'm looking at my one. It's a little bit different than that. I would be happy to see that as a 2024 squad as well. I think that there's a lot of talent in there. And um, there's a couple of good young players can burst through over the next couple of years. And I would love to see if that happened. Um, mine is similar formation, but different players. So I've gone for the wing backs. I've still have, just like Egan, I have Doherty is still in there because I feel that he could do a job for the next couple of years. You know, he's only been in an Ireland jersey for, you know, as far as I can remember, maybe the last two and a half years or so, you yeah. know, really. Um, and he still hasn't nailed down that spot, but I actually do think that he's going to be in the squad for the next couple of years. Um, on the other side, I've actually dropped Aaron Connolly because I just think that I wanted to squeeze him in. You'll, you, you'll hear my top two in, um, strikers in a few minutes' time, but I actually just wanted to, to, to pop him into the side because I think he will be a huge Irish player over the next couple of years. And then my three, I have Josh Cullen, um, in the six, Malumbi, and like you, I have Knight arriving into the box late, um, doing I actually, number I 10. I actually well. left out Josh Cullen there. Look, there you go, do you know what I mean? So I have Josh Cullen in, and you have Coventry in as well. So you know, yeah, both uh, West Ham players. Do you know what I mean? I, I would be they happy be, They could be playing together. Exactly, do you know what I mean? So um, yeah, I, I think Cullen is the, is the main one there that I've gone for that you haven't. Um, but like, there, there's a, a similar formation, and you can see, with Malumbi and Knight as well, there is going to be that spine there for that defensive player and that player number. I wouldn't even call him a number ten. He's kind of like he kind of has like Deli Alley role of like not a second striker, but he rides into the box. He makes himself known. He's Lampard. He kind of like a Lampard. He is like a Lampard player. But um, if, he's, if he scores is. as many goals um, as Lampard, then we'd be absolutely delighted to see uh, Knight making that squad for 2024. Now you're top two, Paul. Yeah, well, I can't really disagree with that too much either, Like to be fair. My top two, uh, this is tough because I'm going to go with Troy Paris. Purely for the fact he's already been capped. He's at Spurs and he's so highly talked about by former pros. Mick McCarthy's talked about him. Stephen Kenny loves him. Mm. I think he's just, I think he's he's in there, but the problem is, and these two lads are probably further ahead of him in the development right now. Is Ida and Connolly, and I can't pick between the two. Yeah, I mean, Ida gives you that strength and this mad skill that yeah. he pulls out of nowhere. Yeah, like, he's a very skillful for player. a big lad. Like it's like watching Zlatan, some of the stuff he does, like that elastico that he did uh, for doing the twenty one. Oh, unbelievable. And, and Connor, Connor Ronan, another player left out by mistake, but um. Yeah, Connor Ronan had his hands on his head in disbelief when he did it. And then you got Aaron Connolly, who I think he's just as hungry for goals. Mm. And that, for me, in a striker, that's what you want. Yeah. And yeah, I, I mean, I suppose I had Almeida written down first, so I'm going to have to just stick with that and be honest. Yeah. But Connolly can feel very, very, very um, disheartened because he's probably ahead of all them in terms of the development right now. But if you're adding up the years, mm. a lot of them will be in their 20s it's hard to argue that in fairness as well do you know it, like I'm happy to see the likes of Connolly Ida Parrott all fighting for that spot do you it's know? great because to have options it is fantastic to have options now I've gone for a, one similar player and one different player my similar player is Troy Parrott for obvious reasons and for the same reasons that you said and then I just put Glenn Whelan up there and I think Glenn is going to be what <laughs> joking with you no in fairness though I actually wouldn't be surprised if Glenn was around in 2024 the way he's going the man is motoring on um, I've gone for Michael Obafemi. I we be playing for Accrington Stanley next. Time. I really like Michael Obafemi. He's, Obafemi, yeah. He, anytime he's played in the Premier League, he, he just seems like he's always given 110%. He's a kind of floats around the box. He's not afraid to get a shot off. And you know, he's still very young as well, like those other players. And I think he could step up and make the difference. Like he's a really strong mm, stocky guy. He's still playing for the under 21s as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Do you know, like, so he's only 19. Yeah, because we've had videos before trying to pick who could play up front for Ireland. And all the lads we've mentioned now could probably be 
a shoe in for next year anyway. Do you know, mm. definitely. It's, it, it is unfortunate that um, we're not able to, you know, go to a qualification round now that we could blood a couple of these lads in. Or your Nations League. Yeah. Or a Nations League would be absolutely perfect. But we have the qualifiers. Um, but, you know, we could be looking at qualifiers four years down the line and, and arguing Obafemi over Parrot or Parrot over Ida or anything like that. Or Glen Whelan over someone. I'm kind of thinking that it should maybe be a move night out to the left and put um, Conor, uh, Conor Rowe. Kind of Ronan, sorry, in the number ten because he's brilliant as well. So you take, you're, so you're taking. If I was to take out Everett, put Knight on the left and put Conor Ronan as a number ten. So that's ball, that's kind of what I want to do. It's now. a bold call. Well, 2024, four years down the line, we're going to be qualified, hopefully, for the Euros 2024. And um, you can let us know what team would you like to see, and it's not really what team would you like to see. It's more predict. Do you know from what you've seen over the last? A couple of months which young players will be stepping up should be stepping up and could be stepping up into the Ireland squad yeah no, let us know your thoughts in the comments because a lot of people have asked for us to do a video like this before so this is the first time we're doing it and we're putting ourselves out there yeah we're going to get slaughtered <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no. Glenn Whelan Glenn Whelan oh, oh, number nine please good lad you wouldn't have to do that much running <laughs>